It's time to shift our attitude towards January. This month is well known for words like diet, depressing, cold, boring, broke, and many more. I felt this way in the past, but not for long. The average world life expectancy is 73 years old. We have a January every year, so doing the maths, that's about six years worth of Januaries. I refuse to waste six years moping about, so I'm looking to incorporate some cosy habits and things to look forward to. The holiday season can burn us out, and perhaps you're still tired from whatever last year brought you. I know I am. We may not be lucky enough to have left it all in 2023, so hopefully this video can help you be productive, yet protective of your well-being. Let's start by taking the Christmas decorations down and refreshing the space. Christmas decorations are all down. It does feel a little empty, but this is the first year where I've not felt too sad from the absence of the Christmas tree and all the lights and everything. Feeling nice and fresh. And before I jump into my mood board and also my 2024 goals, I wanted to share a few books that I'd read last year and don't laugh, <laughs> I only read five. Uh, I had a goal for 2023 to read five books. I read four. And then I had like 60 pages left of a book on, on New Year's Eve and then I finished it on the second. So I kind of did complete it and I kind of didn't at the same time. But I wanted to go through the books that I read. I'll do this really quickly because I know this isn't like a book channel. But I'm really proud of myself. I'm not, like I'm a fast reader. But then I read books slowly in the way that it takes me a really long time to read them. I read them all at the same time. I, my brain just works weirdly like that. And yeah, I just don't read that many books. For me, five is quite good. And for 2024, I put six goals. So I've just raised it by one. <laughs> Let's do the first one that I completed. This is Girl Crush. It's by Florence Given. It's a fiction and a follow up to one of my favorite books in the entire world, which is women don't owe you pretty i'm looking at the, i'm trying to see i can see the book title there but my eyesight like, is not good enough i actually got this signed so cute i went to a book signing in london last year i think it was last year i don't know when this came out it's just a really sweet by positive like 
bisexual positive book and it is really really good and I highly recommend it it was just a really fun read the next book that I finished was actually given to me by a friend my YouTube friend Izzy Isabel she gave me Where the Crawl Dads Sing and we've kind of been swapping books a little bit and I've always wanted to read this I've heard so much about it the film came out I haven't watched it because I wanted to wait to read the book and this book changed me I feel like my and the way that I read books I want to read more books like this if anyone has read this and has read similar things please 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 DM me on Instagram or write a YouTube comment down below because I genuinely fell in love with this book I fell in love with the character if you know what I mean if you read this book you're gonna know what I mean it's quite a long one uh, but it was beautiful and the way that it was written was so descriptive and I felt like I was actually there so huge fan the next book I'm not gonna speak too long about because I get really emotional <laughs> Okay, okay. It's this book. And I finished this book two days before he died. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the power of reading and of literature. This is the first time I think I've probably got emotional on my channel. But I love this book. I learnt so much about addiction and alcoholism that I didn't know before. He did an incredible job of describing what he went through, how he helped people, his journey, like the trauma and just the absolute roller coaster that alcohol and drug addiction can put you on and i am a huge friends fan i always have been the beginning of the book has a lot of friends facts and behind the scenes that i've never heard of which is fascinating so i actually would read it just for this and i think i'm going to read this again it was that good what's interesting is i feel like if you're going to read this now you'll have a really different perspective and view of him and the book because he's passed so, <clears throat> and I gave this to my dad to read as well, as I thought he'd really like it, and he absolutely loved it. The last page, actually the first and the last page, now you read it, like now, in t today, is just quite interesting, but yeah, an amazing amazing book an amazing man and then the next two books a bit more brighter <laughs> a bit more of a brighter energy are seasonal books and i really got into some halloweeny uh festive books this year and i'm so happy i loved this it was so like girly pop fiction it's basically about t um like a young two young adults who are living in a very like Halloween town vibe. It's just witchy and it's spiritual and it's funny and it's like spicy. So yeah, and I can't wait to read the sequel to this. And the last book I'm here and there about, I saw John Green was one of the authors of this book. Essentially, it's three tiny books in one and they are set at the same time in the same place, but they are written by different people and they are about different people but it's a Christmas book and I was reading this over the Christmas period and it really did put me in the mood and it was quite a big one for me again like I'm not the biggest reader so I finished this on like Jan 2nd and I don't think I'd read this again but it was good and it was nice and festive. I hope you enjoyed that little book review so I thought let's jump into bed get cozy and go through the 2023 and my new 2024 mood boards. Okay, so here is my vision board from 2023. I did this either end of 2022 or the very beginning of the January in 2023. And I'm pretty happy with this. I think that a lot of it I've ticked off and then there's a lot of things I wanna bring over to 2024 as well. I actually have a few pictures that kind of look very, very similar to a lot of these images on the PowerPoint. So just really quickly, I know it's probably more interesting to look at 2024 in the year ahead than looking in the past, but there are some things I definitely didn't do. So I've got some Barcelona images here, not going to Barcelona anytime soon, but who knows? And then I wanted to get some nice artwork or do some nice artwork for the house. I didn't do that and I haven't. We looked at getting the bathroom done. When we got the quote, we literally got engaged that same weekend. So the money is going towards the wedding and the engagement ring is up here and it's not too dissimilar. Gold band, emerald, 
cut diamond just the baguettes are a little different as you can let me just bring it up here here we go you can kind of see it the baguettes are slightly different but very very similar so Andy did an amazing job <laughs> and then some of the elements I'm really really happy that kind of came true were the hosting images so I've got one here and I have one here and I'm so happy this year definitely had lots of friends over all seasons and we celebrated just life and we did really cute things that like we did the pumpkin painting which was so fun and just some really good food and cozy evenings and this kind of happened as well on the last day of the year had some friends over for New Year's Eve and it was lovely and I got some mountain pictures here and even though I didn't go skiing in 2023, I'm going in a few weeks time. So I'm actually kind of counting that as a yes, as I booked a ski trip in 2023, technically. Here is a gorgeous photo of a beige vintage Chanel classic flap. I did not buy any Chanel bags this year. I love how that kind of sounds like, oh, woe is me. I didn't buy any Chanel bags. But that is something I'm planning on doing this year and maybe a chocolate one, a chocolate brown. Then moving over to this section. Now, this picture here is, hang on, watch this. You guys, I took the same photo it's absolutely identical. Here we go. The the it kind of gets a bit confused of where to focus, but the photo is the same. I just can't believe it. I was so happy. It was a complete fluke that we actually got this table. You can't book specific tables at Nobu. I mean, you probably can, but we're not of that financial slash celebrity status to do so. It was in March when we went to the States and it was my first time in California and we ordered the white wine. I was like, this is a picture to get that is on my vision board and I am so happy. It was such an amazing meal, highly recommend and would absolutely go again. And then I've got some wellness elements on the top left. So my Pilates and my matcha, I definitely ticked a lot of those off and I'm bringing that into 2024. And then I've got a few holidays on the left. We're looking at booking something that looks a bit like this. I haven't got round to it. And we did go to New York, but not in the autumn. So that's like a semi yes. And then I've got some really cute Malona, Manolo Blahnix right up here. And I did buy a pair, I think. So that's sort of a yes, even though they weren't navy. So I'm pretty happy with the 2023 vision board. Now it is time to show you my new 2020 vision board. I'm not gonna show you how I did it because it's super easy. You can just do it in PowerPoint or Canva or PicMonkey, whatever you wanna do, or a physical one. I used to do physical ones when I was younger all the time. So let me show you a full screen version of this. I was really excited about this. I've definitely given it more of like an aesthetic feel, but as you can see, I really wanna focus on friendships and spending personal time with people my love language for me like for receiving a love language is personal time and I've got a lot of pictures like here here uh, kind of here I guess and then these here are all with friends so having people over and having like cozy evenings in and then also like going away and doing little cute city break trips and then also I love to bring my friends to Bamford and do some Pilates classes and have like a little wellness day. I definitely want to do more of that this year. And then I've got a few skiing pictures. So some really cozy, cute outfits here. I've actually got these boots and these earmuffs. So I can't wait to wear them on the slopes. And then here's another picture up here going skiing. And then I have a small sort of like tech youtube element up on the top left i would love to hit a thousand subscribers this year so if you are watching and you're not subscribed it would be awesome to have you here i love this setup of the desk here it's just so beautiful and then i've got a picture here this is just sort of a vibe i want to give off this year really classic really casual happy and it to me this is just gives a very low effort look and that's kind of the vibe I want to give this year. And then this section here I've got some more fashion elements and wellness too. So I have sauna on the right and then I have sound healing crystal bowls up here. Some of my goals that I've written down on my phone, which I'll go through, are linked to that. And I've got some awesome like crystals and candles just giving off some nice ritual, very cosy, calm vibes. 
And then I've got a few fashion elements as well. So I'm really loving this outfit. I really want to try and recreate. You've probably seen from a few of my last few videos. I'm really just into chocolate brown at the moment. So that Gucci bag is just stunning. And I love the check coat too. And then I have a picture of my fave fictional character, Rachel Green, down at the bottom. I love her 90s vibe. I love her fashion. So kind of taking a little bit more of that classic, effortless, good quality clothes that will just hopefully fill my wardrobe. And then I really am up for a new pair of Chanel bass classic ballet flats i've had mine for about six seven years now and i love them so having a new shade would be great that is pretty much it let me know if you guys have done a vision board you know if it's physical if it's digital this is what i'm looking at for 2024 i'd say the main themes are friends wellness and good quality classic fashion those are top, probably my top three for this year i do have lots of personal goals too but this is a fun to look at screensaver. I put it on my uh, background of my laptop, my desktop, just to look at, to remind me of where I need to be and where I've come from. So yeah, this is my vision for 2024. Okay, I'm back on the voiceover and enjoy these clips of us taking Maple out for a walk. She's very excited. But I thought I would just take this section and break up the video by just giving you a few ideas on how to keep it easy and fresh, really simple. If you're not doing a whole mood board and ideas and goals, maybe these seven simple ideas can help. So I've got down trying a new vegetable, try a new nail color, bubble baths by candlelight, continuing an exercise class you enjoyed last year. For me, that would be reformer Pilates. Sleep when you need it. If you set your alarm, there's nowhere to be or nothing to do and you're still tired, then sleep in. No one's going to care or tell you off. Travel somewhere new. It doesn't have to be far. It could be a town you've always driven through but never stopped in. It could be somewhere else in your country. Like for me, I've never been to York but would love to go. The last one is a classic. Cleaning out all your photos, like deleting duplicate photos on your phone, screenshots you no longer need, etc., and honestly, like even if you just did one of those things, it could refresh your mindset, make you feel a little bit better. And yeah, let me know if you go ahead and try any of these. And then the final part, I think I'm just going to go through some of my goals. <laughs> Last year, I, I think I got about five of my 14 goals, which is not a good conversion rate, but that's okay. And I'm bringing some of them into 2024. So I'm just kind of like duplicating them. And to be honest, some of them from last year didn't really serve me going on throughout the year. So things just changed where that wasn't really a goal I wanted to do anymore. And also I had a health issue from sort of August all the way through to December where it meant that I was kind of switched off and I was just really focusing on me and not putting too much pressure on myself. So yeah, that's not, I'm not too bothered about not completing those goals. So I have them on my phone. I have a mix of phone and also physical notes. I have the actual goals on my phone and then how I track them, I do it on paper. So I kind of just like, list out the dates or I list out the quantity, you know, whatever it is, whatever measurement it is, I have it on paper so I don't have to keep looking at my phone and I can reduce my screen time a bit. But I have a few categories. So I have personal development, YouTube, health, spirituality and fun. So I'll go through them really quickly and yeah, this is very personal and I'm going to go through pretty much all of the goals and this video will also help keep me accountable and hopefully it just like gives you a bit of inspiration and ideas on what, maybe what you could do throughout this year. Again, I know not, some people aren't super into this and not, aren't into goal taking and or goal setting and I completely get it, it can be quite a lot. Just enjoy having a little bit of a, a nose into my life there. <laughs> So personal development, I've got be on time and that I've got a few actionable, like measurable elements to that goal of how to, how many minutes to leave before a train or a Pilates class. And I've got that all written down and I have to make sure that I've ticked it saying I was on time. 
as it is something I really struggle with. I want to become a beginner in Japanese through Duolingo. I'm currently on like day 26, so I want to do a 365 day streak on Duolingo for Japanese. Uh, I would like to visit a new country and hopefully that will all come true in a few weeks as I'm off to Norway and I've never been to Norway before. Uh, therapy once a month, so I've been seeing the same therapist since 2019 and I've been in patterns of just seeing her when things go a bit wrong or I have my like stomach issues so I've decided I'm going to say no even when things are going really well I'm still going to do a session once a month with her to just check in and it means that also if something does happen I'm not sort of nervous to go back because I've already been doing it for a month so YouTube, I'd like to hit a thousand subscribers. You saw it when I was going through my 2024 mood board. And if you like my content and you do come back but you're not subscribed yet or you're not too sure, this is your sign to subscribe. I also want to do one nine to five work vlog every quarter as they seem to be my highest performing consistent videos. And if you are here from one of those vlogs and you like that sort of thing, let me know if you have any feedback or if you have anything that you want to see because I'd love to hear it as I feel like that is just the way I'm going to get better at this. So I need to do more of those vlogs. I'd like to work with one brand. This was a goal of mine from last year, but I was, I think, too specific about which brand and I didn't complete it. So just one would be great. Any brands that are watching, hey, my DMs are open. <laughs> It'd be really fun to work together. Oh, and then this is a big one, and it's make an effort to maximize my SEO score. Now, this is such a great goal if you're a content creator because there are so many good plugins that you can have on your YouTube account, like One TV. I think that's TubeBuddy, and there's another one as well, like an analytics one, and it tells you on your video and other people's videos, all the SEO, like have you done all the tags, are they high performing tags, is your content being searched by other people, that sort of thing. So I want to make sure that when I put my YouTube videos out, it's not just click and go and upload, I'm really taking time to make sure that it is optimised. And then I have three goals for health. Number one is attend 100 Pilates classes. I'm really excited about this one. I've done two so far and it's January the 8th, so we're getting there. And I have a list in my notebook by my bed where I can write the date and if I was on time or not. So that's sort of like two goals in one. I wanna do sauna bi-weekly. I absolutely love sauna. I'm someone who loves the heat. I'm not a cold therapy gal. I, that's really not me. Me, at least at the moment and I love the sauna and I just really reap the benefits so do that every two weeks and then I have once a month red light therapy or red light sauna now this is my okay I'm I'm really excited about this one I've never done spirituality goals before and I've really really got into it in the last three or four months my first goal is read two friends astrology charts so that's when you plug in your birthday the time you were born and where you were born and it comes up with what was in the sky that very minute that you were born and where are all the planets and everything it's really cool there are loads of free options on the internet and for example my sun sign is leo and then i have a double sign i have my moon and my rising or the ascendant it may be called in taurus so I'm a Leo Taurus Taurus and interestingly, interestingly enough, my mum is a Taurus Leo Leo. <laughs> so we're quite the pair, but I'm really into that. And let me know if you would like to sort of get into that a little bit more and include it more in my vlogs because I absolutely love it and I'm really passionate about it. My second goal for spirituality is take part in two solstice ceremonies. I think I did two last year and essentially that's like winter solstice, autumn equinox, you know, that sort of thing. Longest day, shortest day of the year. And it's where you sort of charge your crystals and do a meditation, great affirmations. And I just found that I was, whenever I did them, the people that were there were just so involved and wonderful and lovely. And I just want to be around that a bit more. The third is once a month crystal bowl sound healing. And I've ticked that for January. I love this stuff. If you suffer from anxiety, I would really recommend this and you don't have to go to a physical class or a physical session even though 
my goal is a physical session i use it on youtube a lot i'll put down a few links in the description below of my favorite ones it really helps me go to sleep it helps me calm down i get like nice vibrations around my head i feel like they just that's where it lands for me and it just makes me feel less anxious so more of that and then the last one sort of piles into the second one it's new moon and full moon activities what i mean by that if i break it down sort of making smaller goals for that period i'm pretty sure it's like a two week period ish charging my crystals checking in talking with friends and also seeing how they're feeling and kind of giving advice on like where the moon is to sort of help justify their emotions or give them some guidance and also reading up on my own chart as well i got an amazing present from andy where i had like a voucher for this website that really goes into your chart a lot more so i can't wait to use that and then the last one fun of course i have to finish on this one because you know it's it's something light and airy and i'm just beaming just looking at this because i'm so excited to get these done not like i want to complete them it's it's just i'm just really excited to book them in so host a paint and sip i really enjoyed doing a paint and sip halloween pumpkin session last year so i want to do that maybe in the summer will be lovely i want to make sushi with my dad he's really good at making sushi and it's so so hard and maybe i can like bring in a japanese language element to that so i've really been looking forward to to doing that and i'll be spending some personal time with my dad read six books which i mentioned earlier and see two shows on the West End. Last year I saw two shows on Broadway, I saw uh, the play that goes wrong, the Peter Pan version, and then I saw, this was, I booked tickets an hour before the show, I saw Leah Michelle in Funny Girl, and I was so glad I did, because I know she comes with some controversy, but my gosh, is she talented, and it was one of the best shows I've ever seen. So I'd really like to see two shows on the West End. I'm really gutted to be missing out on Merrily on Broadway. It has Jonathan Groff, Daniel Radcliffe and a lady I can't remember. And I really wanted to see it and I signed up to the pre-sale thinking, oh, I'm just gonna go to New York and see it. But that just hasn't happened. So if anyone has seen that, I'm so jealous. And I think they've got like a month or two left at the time of this vlog, which is January 8th. So get some tickets if you're into Broadway because it looks amazing. So yeah, those are all my goals and I'm really excited for the year to come. I feel 2024, there's something about it that's giving me 2020-12 vibes and energy. In 2012, I finished school, I went to uni, I turned 18, it was the Olympics, I had like the best summer of my life. It was honestly a year that I'll never forget and I'm just, I'm something, I'm 30 this year which is so exciting and I have all my friends 30th I've got a few really close friends weddings it's gonna be good it's gonna be good I'm gonna feel it I'm putting it out there and it's gonna be good for you too I just know it I can't wait to check in with all these girls as I go throughout the year and see how I'm doing whether you're setting goals or just hoping to get through this year I hope it's a happy and it's a healthy one and you get to do what you want to do. And honestly, if you set no goals, but you just feel like 1% better than you did last year, that's amazing. And I'm not just saying that, it really is amazing. And I hope that happens for you. So let me know what you thought. I love these sorts of videos. I've watched so many in the past week of all my favorite YouTube content creators. And I just felt inspired to do one like I did last year. So I'll see you in the next video.